when should a man get a vasectomy? Well, if he doesn't want to spread his seed far and wide, obviously, or if he's done having kids because of what he wants to do, not because of the wifey. Okay, well then let me ask you this. Should a man get a vasectomy? I personally don't like knives. I don't see myself, you know, hacking myself up like that. I'm going to probably pass. Like in Dominic's case, he um, he was... He went and uh, I think we talked about this on one of the podcasts. He went and and did that unbeknownst to Ashley and said, "Hey, by the way, I got a vasectomy," and she was like, "I'm out," because she wanted kids. And so that created some problems. Obviously, we've seen those videos, and so she dipped out. And then he was like, "Everything's gonna be great." We did a podcast with it. And then a month or so later, he's like, I want to get her back. So he went and undid the plumbing, reconnected it. And the doctor's like, probably take about three months to prime the pump for little swimmers to kind of build up, ready to deploy, get one past the goalie when needed. And I think he, she got pregnant maybe three or four weeks after that. So he's a healthy dude. He's strong like bull. (laughs) Well, what about from... A different perspective like on birth control like what if the woman doesn't want to take an oral contraceptive or put in an IUD because it's not the safest option well the patriarchy is undefeated it is a man's world so you can wear a condom you can pull out which neither one of those are a hundred percent foolproof so either way (laughs) you're gonna be rolling the dice. I'd say if you don't want to have kids, it's a good way to do it. I don't like the idea of because I was asking Dominic, I was like, "What happens to all the little swimmers if you just cut them off? You can't, you can't blow the barrels out." He says, "Oh, it, the little sperm just gets reabsorbed in your body." I was like, "Are you sure?" It doesn't sound good. <laughs> Are there any like side effects um, of getting one? I don't know. I remember uh, when I after my uh, when I was a kid, I think I was probably five or six. I remember my dad got one. And I, I don't know why I remember this. You guys, I'm going to share these nice details with you. But I remember my dad sitting on the edge of the bathtub in his bathrobe. He manspread it. And my mom was down there snipping off the um, the stitches. Like, whatever. I didn't really understand time. It was just, hey, we're just not going to have any more kids. I was like, okay. I didn't really, I didn't really get that. I was pretty young. But he never got, that was it. And he was, let me think, he was 20, probably 25 at the time. It's a long time ago. Good job, Dad. He was 25 when he got it done? My parents got, you know, my dad asked my mom to prom. And then because they both worked at Publix, he was like, he, he was like a stock boy, stocked the shelves. She worked at the cash register, obviously. He asked her out to prom. They started dating and got married when... I think they were 19 or 20, and they had me when they were 21. My dad was actually deployed in Vietnam at the time when I was born. So they got started early. I mean, that's what they did back then. You typically marry your high school sweetheart, start a family right away, and then... That's pretty young. It's a different era. I mean, was it this... Sorry. No, go ahead. Was it the same? It would, like, do they do the same procedure the same way they did back then now? Well, it was the chicken bag, so they slice it. It's like an... Well, at least now it's not like an outpatient thing. They just a little small incision. incision yeah. Pull the tubes out. They, put, like, put staples on it, cut it. It's kind of like how they... Tuck it back in, a little stitch action. It's all like an outpatient thing. But when you go to get... It, it reattached they put you under they get a like nice big giant incision in the chicken bag and so it's like microsurgery it's like so and it's like 95 percent effective to um reconnect and i'm obviously worked in dominic's case so i feel like i would explain it as like neutering a dog the first time well neutering a dog you take their balls out no you don't well yeah you cut them out but in this way, you would like leave them in and just like kind of tie it off. Yeah, the balls stay in. They're yeah, just, you just, I was like, wait a second, that doesn't you, you make sense just, with the dog. No, but you like kind of just like tie it off, but leave like the blood supply. Yeah. You well, just 
I'm sure after like it's a, strictly the tubes. Yeah, the sex the deployment tubes. tubes. Yeah. You're not supposed to the cannons. Yeah, the get, cannons are disabled. Um, excited or anything like that because it's pulling on your your scrotum. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't sound very fun. So back to the right. whole it's a man's world kind of thing. It's kind of a little upsetting to kind of say that considering us women, we also have a choice whether or not we want to take uh, um, you know contraceptives. Yeah. I mean, it, I'm just saying well, everything has downside risks. Yeah. But why is it that, you know, when it comes to the whole man's world thing, why do we have to succumb to the whole, oh, we have to take birth control, this, this and that, you know, if a man wants to do that as well, like the whole vasectomy and they're comfortable with it, they should. But why do we have to be the ones to do everything ourselves? That's what at the saying. end of the day, the we're the ones that get pregnant. At the end of the world. day, we're putting no. It's a man's world, patriarchy wise, yeah. But if we don't want to put, we provide if your we don't want to take freedom, birth control, we die in all the wars, we take all the dangerous jobs. Okay, not but always. To give up we... our, our income, if you live in a blue state, then I mean the laws are completely slanted in the woman's favor, and you know, oftentimes the guy doesn't even get to see his kids, and or if he gets remarried, he wants to have kids with a new family. He's so financially distressed that he can't do it. I had a friend. He, um, his, after he got divorced, you know, he had, or in the process of divorce, they had agreed how they were going to split everything up. And so he signed over some real estate to her and, cause they had agreed. He was like, Hey, we got kids together. It'll just handle the formalities. And so after he stupidly signed over a quick claim deed on some real estate to her, she reneged on the deal. And because legally... And the judge was like, hey, you signed these things over to her. And so on top of that, she got a bunch of his other property as well in the divorce. And she tells him, look, looked him right in the eye, and she says, I wanted to take so much of your money that you couldn't have another family. So she wanted to prevent – she wanted to basically leave him financially destitute and take as much of his net worth as possible. She was willing to lie to his face. And swindle him. I mean, it was it was his. I was like, why didn't you call me and ask me this? Because I used to be in real estate. It was like you signed a quick claim deed of all these properties. And I was like, what a dummy. I was like, I love you to death, bro, but that was stupid. And you know, she did it. She was malicious about it. So she smiled to his face, and then she knew exactly what she was doing. She did it on purpose and admitted it afterwards, and she didn't care because she had the properties now. They were hers, and because he quit claim those to her. She he also had to give up a you know half of his other investment properties that he had with her. So and and her whole thing was I I want to take as much even though she came from a very wealthy family very wealthy even though um, she's set for life she didn't care she wanted to, to take as much of his net worth so he couldn't get remarried and afford to have children with anybody else that was her thinking. Yeah, and that's why concept. a guy gets a vasectomy so he doesn't just lay around children like that. He would have to deal with a situation like that. Yeah. Perfect. Or he could just pick yeah. better partners. Exactly that too. <laughs> that too. Yep. All right. Imagine that conversation someday, having that conversation with your kids when they're all growing up. This is what your mother did to me. <laughs> so, you know, I always say it's like always know your downside risk, especially if you live in a blue state before you get married, go see a divorce lawyer. And figure that stuff out. Know what your risks are. Know what your financial exposure is. Because you might not like what they tell you. 